Today, we are going to be ditching the batteries and instead plugging into the limitless power of our wall outlets. We all have our favorite props. Now, this is not one of them, you know, so th this is kind of like my victim, my experimental victim for you guys. The problem is the batteries. I was just constantly shoving in the batteries and you're going through them like faster than trick-or-treaters going through their candy stash. It's expensive and you know what happens when batteries get dim. Certain animatronics, the sound effects get even creepier. It starts off like cheery and then it's like, I'm going to kill you. You know, cause like the batteries are running low or it just stops working altogether. If it's a prop you really love, there's always a risk of damage. And this doesn't matter if you are a beginner or you are super experienced. Just in taking these apart, I have discovered and confirmed the old saying, they don't build them like they used to. Yeah. Some props are easier to take apart than others. And also, if you're more experienced, heck, you can fix it yourself, right? So let's see. We got a battery compartment here. I'm going to pop in some batteries and just see. Let's check out this effect here. Yeah, that's enough on you telling me ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? Leave now. Oh, no, we leaving. We staying. See, it knows. It's telling me to leave now because it's like, oh, my gosh, she's going to hack me. I'm going to look terrible. We all know what kind of stuff she builds, right? We're going to have to get behind this battery compartment. And if you have a battery compartment, same deal. You're going to have to get behind it. And getting behind it involves two different methods. One method Sometimes you'll see screws holding the base plate in place. And sometimes this base plate is on the back of your prop. You know, it can be in a different location, hidden behind a skirt or some clothing. So that's the best case scenario. Then there's a scenario where it's actually glued in and you can already see some wiry mess here. In my heat gun application and trying to pry this up with a flathead screwdriver, there's some bends and things like that. This is not too bad. If I were to put this back together again, you can just always apply the heat gun here and then use a set of pliers just to get it as, as straight as possible. You don't wanna hold the heat gun for long periods of time. It's best to do it in short bursts because the electronics in these things are very inexpensive. I'm trying to find a prettier word than cheap, you know, but there is no other word I can say, you know, inexpensively produced or affordably conscious, you know, those types of words. But no, the electronics are cheap. And that's why go in short bursts with your heat gun. How do I even choose a wall adapter? Like, how does this work? How do we even like power something like this? So the first thing you want to do is examine your prop all over and see if there's a sticker, some kind of like danger sticker or hazardous sticker. And I've examined this entire thing and I couldn't find anything. Sometimes it is actually on the other side of the battery compartment, but that's just like a label about a big bunch of nothing, you know, nothing helpful. So if you have that label, it's super helpful. It'll generally at least minimally tell you the operating voltage of your device. Sometimes it'll even tell you the current that it needs to draw. So you have all the information you need to pick out your wall adapter. Mm, look at this. I suspect the information I needed was right here and I ripped it off. You know how these things are. They're tough to remove. I kind of got bored and it's been like that for years. So say that you have looked your item through. You have just like scoured and there is no label like in my case. So how do you figure out what voltage and how many amps you need to supply to this thing to get it to work, but not burn it through, right? Well, we don't want it to burn. So in that case, you can just count up how many batteries are in your compartment. So one, two, three. Cell batteries operate at 1.5 volts each. So I just have to take uh, 1.5 and multiply that by three. That gives me 4.5 volts. And this is double A. And you may say, well, I have a triple A, or maybe it's a big prop that uses C batteries or something like that, or a small coin battery operated prop. If you look at all these batteries, and these are the more popular batteries that are used in props. There are others, but these are the guys you tend to find. Your coin battery, they have three volt ones. There's also 1.5 volt ones. 
These are usually small props that take this. So you'll know you need to buy a wall adapter that has three volts. Your triple A's, your double A's, your C's, all of those are cell batteries. They're all going to be 1.5 volts. So what's up with the size, right? So the bigger the size, the more capacity it has. That means it's got more energy to deliver, which means it can run more things on your prop and it can run your prop for a longer period of time. No matter your battery size, if it's a cell battery, it's going to be 1.5 volts. So we know we need 4.5 volts. Now with voltage, you never want to exceed the voltage that your prop requires because it'll definitely fry it. Now, what about current? We need to supply enough current for this thing to run, but current is different than voltage because current, you can give it everything. Just like make it rain that current on your prop because that doesn't hurt it. It's only gonna consume the current it needs. So if you have no information on how much current you need to provide, you can use a multimeter to figure that out. If you're not sure how to do that, I have a wonderful tutorial that will show you, but a good rule of thumb is for a prop this size, at least one amp. You probably won't need one amp, but anything from one amp to three amps should be good to go. And again, you're not going to hurt it. This AC DC adapter, you know, and, and these, this takes the AC coming out of your walls, converts it to DC, which is safe for our battery operated devices here. So you can see that there's a selector knob and I can select three volts, 4.5, five, nine, you know, a variety all the way up to 12 volts. I love having adapters like this because you can kind of swap them between a whole bunch of different props and just kind of dial in what you need. And this one, I believe is, I'm trying to read the minuscule writing that says output. Don't judge. Oh yeah. I'm doubling it up. This is a three amp. So this is going to be more than enough. So at 4.5 volts, we are safe in the volts. We are not exceeding the volts and we are giving it like a buffet of amps. Amps goes up to the buffet and takes the little salad plate or the dessert plate. And I'll just have this. I'll just have this. So you can supply it all the amps you want. It's just going to take meagerly what it needs. Volts is a different subject. And I admit I am volts. Volts will go to the buffet table and be like, okay, I just need 4.5 but mm, this is delicious. Volts takes two dinner plates to the buffet and starts to shovel that food. Oh yeah, we all know a Volt in our family, right? So come on now, I'm Volt. So let me know in the comments whether you are an Amps buffet eater or a Volt buffet eater. <laughs> By turning this around, we see kind of this spaghetti mess and we can see that the battery compartment is here. And we can see that there are four metallic contacts. If you just start moving wires around, you'll notice that here's a red one. You always find two batteries connected to the battery pack, or not two batteries, two wires. Here's the red one. So we're going to assume that's power connected to this contact here. And digging around right here is a black wire along with the tiniest little resistor I've seen in a long time. Oh, and a bunch of like hardened old glue that is falling off. They often will hot glue a lot of these connections together because these wires are so thin that they can snap off the connection sometimes. What I like to do is solder my negative right onto this and solder the positive right onto here. That way you can maintain your battery compartment functionality and you know, you can also power it via the wall adapter. Again, not at the same time. It's either or. So looking at the end of our unit here, our, our wall adapter, you can just cut. I usually cut a little bit down because it's nice to be able to adapt this to something else. If you cut it like right here, then there's like no wires for you to be able to solder to. So, you know, cut her, I, I would say, you know, maybe four inches away and you can permanently then solder. Well, here's another thing. Now this power cord is permanently attached to your prop. We're going to keep this intact and instead use a female connector. And you can just do that. And when Halloween is over, boom, you know, this goes with the prop and you can use this for a different haunt. Christmas haunt, you know, there's such thing as Christmas haunts, of course. And you can see I have some tester wires for now coming out of this. These are jumper wires for breadboards because oftentimes I power breadboards with this little guy. 
before we kind of like wire everything up, why don't we double check that the connections that I suspect I'm going to make are indeed correct. So I'm going to clamp that there and I'm going to clamp that here. And you always want to make sure negative and positive aren't touching. And that's why it's important to do this with the power off. It is not connected to anything. So we can kind of lay out our wires in a way where there's no touching, no electronic cooties. There it is. It is dust to dust. So we've confirmed that this is the connections that we want to make. Now, when I try and solder these wires, these other wires may unsolder. So we may have to try and get them to all solder at once. I have these like random wires, just bits and pieces from other projects that I'm trying to use up. So I'm going to pick them. And why don't we do green for power? Power means go, right? So that's, that's green. And we'll use white for ground because in certain projects like LED strips, ground is usually the white wire. And if the red one comes off, we'll just have to secure both of them and put both of them on here. And so I have it touching the contact right there. And let's, I'm going to fire up a fan because you don't want to be breathing in this stuff. Now I'm going to go from underneath. <laughs> this was not planned really well. And it looks like I'm going to let it cool, but the red one might have budged, but it might still be connected. It might have reconnected itself. Oh, it came off. Yeah, so we're going to redo this one right here. Let me unsolder him. There we go. It's kind of twisted. <laughs> All right. Your solders don't have to be pretty to work. So if it's your first time, these are great practice projects. So this has made it kind of tough for me because I got to like come around from this side, but we're going to try. I'm just, there's a huge blob of solder here. All right, so I'm going to give it a gentle tug with my little tweezers here. And now let's turn this around so we can more easily access this other connection back here. And this is probably going to be the similar thing. So I might as well just un desolder them. Unsolder, desolder. Solder these two together down here <laughs> over the control board. We are going to now attach that little end to the black on the connector. That should be way easier than trying to tackle three at the same time. Right. Let's give all these a quick tug. Okay. Okay. And let's stick this guy in here. So you can see there's little to no metal poking out. So we don't have to worry about the positive and the negative shorting each other. It's like running away. It's like, don't plug me in. Don't plug me in, please. All right, here we go, people. Enough with you. <laughs> all right, so our connections all work. This I know is the back of the prop. So is there a spot that I can kind of have this barrel, female barrel portion come out? And so if we look inside here, 
we have kind of an elevated battery compartment. So it would be nice to kind of put it here, but I think we're gonna have a clearance issue. So what about like right there? That looks good. And we're only interested in this barrel portion right here. Now I'm gonna widen it just a little. All right, almost guys. Might be easier to do it with a file here, just widen it. And again, a little easy because I don't have any electronics to hit where I might damage something. There we go, that's nice. Because this is a temp project, I may just leave it as is because I'm gonna take it apart anyways. Otherwise I'd be hot, hot gluing this really, really well. So I'm not gonna go crazy getting it just right. Let's see what happens, I'm going to plug it in. There we go. You ashes to ashes and dust to dust because we just dusted you. Mm -hmm. There we have it. One prop converted to power. All of these workshops are streamed live for community members so you can ask questions, chat amongst yourselves, and heck, if you have certain knowledge in what we're doing, chime in. Let us know what you've experienced or better ways to do things. In addition to that, we have our weekly community builds where we build an entire animatronic via Zoom. So you are invited to join. The link for that is below. And I also have a fuller tutorial because since these are shot live, there are certain things where I'm like, man, I wish I would have covered that or in more detail. So definitely hit that link. <laughs> It's one last message to you guys, like leave now, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, run guys.